Hello chaps and chapesses, and this week we're going to talk about the trigger fish. So aside from giant trevally, triggerfish are probably my number one favourite species to try and catch on a fly. To me, they're like an attainable permit or the kind of the Jack Russell of the flats. They've got such character, every time you try to catch one it's a very, very different experience and you've got three different species to attack on the flats, each one with its own characteristics. They're incredibly powerful for their size, uh, they take flies readily and you can have a very interesting experience with a triggerfish as it tries to eat your offering whether it be a crab or a shrimp. Having just got back from Provenance Atoll in the Seychelles, I decided to do an end of the bow interview with head guide Tim Babbage to get his views and thoughts on triggerfish and how to catch them. So Tim, what is it about triggers that you love so much? Oh, there's, there's various different things, different aspects of triggers. The, for me, they, they probably present more of a technical challenge um, in a way of of the fly, your fly selection, the kind of water you're going to find in the men, you know, you really have to cross all the T's and dot, dot all the I's to, to find the right water, get the fly in the right place, and then and then you got to hook him. It's, it's a very difficult fish to hook, got a lot of teeth up in the front, um, so you got to find some flesh in there that the, the hook can, can, can get in there. Then you hook him, and um, if you hook him, they have a habit of, of trying to go back into their home, into a coral head, or a little undercut, so they, you've got to often dive them out, they can get in there, so that makes it a little bit more tricky. The other thing is with trigger fish, every single experience, encounter with, with the species is different. Um, whereas a lot of your species, like the PT, they kind of usually play out the same way, um, there's, there's much of a muchness, whereas trigger fish, every encounter is different. They, they've got huge amounts of character. Some days you just find they were impossible to catch. Other days you wonder how they survive. Um, they're also quite aggressive little buggers. You know, you, you'll get close, you'll stalk up to one, and um, he'll notice that you're there. And, and instead of swimming away like most other fish, they'll actually swim up to you on their sides, kind of give you this, this eyeball, and then and then scuttle away. And you might slow down for a little bit, and then you think you're in the, in the game again, and you'll move on or swim back towards you. They, they, they got huge amounts of character. A very underrated fish in my opinion. And to be honest, probably one of my favorite fish to, to fish for um, on the flats. You get the three sort of main species that we target on the flats. The trigger family is quite a big family. Unfortunately, a lot of them are, are restricted to the deeper water, but we get three species up on the flats. Um, your two bigger species, the triton or uh, moustache trigger, the yellow margin, and then your smaller species, which is probably one of the, the prettiest fish on the, on, the, on the flats, which is your Picasso trigger. They don't get much bigger than, than that. Uh, still good fun to catch. Also a lot of character. But the two main species, the yellow margin and your moustache trigger, they, they're the ones that we're targeting most of the time. Um, up in the shallow water, you see their tails stick out, your, your moustache trigger's got like a flat flag tail, whereas your, your yellow margin's got a more of a sickle orange type of tail. And uh, they're really good fun, and I uh, highly recommend trying to catch them. They can be frustrating at times, but this makes it more rewarding when you do catch one. To me, they've always been a, been a bit like an, either an attainable permit or the Jack Russell of the flats. They definitely are. They definitely are. I think they're are. much bigger than they really are. They're exceptionally powerful. Um, they're not scared of, of anything really. They've got, you know, quite a serious bunch of teeth, which is basically half the fish is just jawbone. So there's, there's a lot of hydraulics happening in that, in that little mouth of theirs. You don't want to get your finger or any appendage anywhere in there. And I've seen them, you know, you take the Farquhar pets, for instance, the big GT pets. Um, you know, you could have a shark coming to that bay, a barracuda or any other fish and those GTs will, will chase that, that shark or fish out of that area. But there's res residence triggers that, that, you know, stay in that bay 
and it, it's it's one of the few things that that GT is scared of. They they're absolutely terrified of that trigger. They little, like you said, little Jack Russells, tenacious little buggers. And uh, when they got their territory, um, you happen to walk into that area, and, and divers will tell you they can be quite aggressive, and they'll they'll actually come up and give you a little nip if they get half a chance. Nasty little buggers when they want to be, and uh, it can also make it tricky when trying to catch them on the flat. You'll have one busy tailing, and then another trigger will enter his territory and then they they suddenly start chasing each other all over the place making it very difficult to catch them they are awesome little creatures so if you see one tailing on the flat what's your sort of process for trying to actually catch him i think the main thing is you get into a comfortable range that you, you you're comfortable in making the first cast accurate and and, and, and making it count the they can be very skittish on certain days you you literally can't get close to them but what you want to do is be pay a lot of attention to what noise you're making so when you're walking through the water you don't want to be pushing a lot of water you want to be treading lightly they do pick up and are very sensitive to to crunchy noises if you're walking on broken coral or whatever it may be they will pick up on that especially if they down current um, so you want to you want to pay attention to that obviously the clothing you're wearing um, no bright orange sort of colors white shirts uh, they it's, it's more theoretical, but we do have a theory that that, that does, does spook them off. Get into position. Um, I like to wait for their tail to come up. Um, when they're tailing, they're usually quite preoccupied with what they're doing in their, in their immediate area. So they're not really aware. If you put a fly, you know, two yards to the left of him, he might not. There we go. We've got a GT. Okay, carry on with the triggers while Brummy's catching a big G. Um, oh. So Brummy's into a GT. Okay, fine. Back to the triggers. You've seen a trigger tailing. Now you wanna, you wanna, you wanna obviously get close as quietly as you can. In most cases, shallow water. You wanna try use a fly as light as possible so that you can get that fly as close to the fish as possible. Because when they, when they got their heads down, they're very preoccupied with the, the immediate area that they're in. So they're not really scanning out too far away. So you've got to try to deliver that fly gently as possible, get it as close to the trigger as, as you dare without spooking him. Usually what I like to do at that point, if he hasn't seen it come down, um, I wait for him to stop tailing. He'll usually lift up his head and then you just start off with a long sort of steady strip. The key with the trigger is just to let him see the fly. Once he sees the fly, he's going to come rushing over and you're pretty much guaranteed as, as soon as your fly stops and as soon as the fish stops, He's eating it, so he's trying to pin the crab down, usually throwing crabs or, or small shrimps. So he's pinned that crab down, and I like to give quite a pretty hard set on the first eat. So the first initial dig that he has at it, it's usually the hardest one he, he goes at. Um, you know, draw it, feel the tension, give it quite a hard pull. If you don't set the hook, all that generally happens is the, the fly will pop out and the fish will, will track it again and, and try to pin it down. Once you start getting that sort of cat and mouse effect, then what you want to do is the next time he stops, pins, start with a slow draw, steady draw. As soon as you feel any kind of tension on the line, you just want to give it a short pull. Um, if you don't feel anything or you don't hook up, all that will happen again. The fly will pop out and the fish will retrack it. This can happen three to four or five times sometimes until they're right at the rod tip before you finally hook them or he's busted your hook. They, like I said, they've got immensely strong jaws. They can absolutely destroy flies, bite hooks in half, mangle the hook, mangle the fly, bite your leader off. Um, but once you do get that fish on, so you're gonna strip set, important not to lift the rod. If you lift the rod, all you do is you pull that fly away from that fish. It's one of the few fish that'll, that'll eat a fly and continue to try eat that fly. Most fish will get a taste for it. Bonefish might do two or three eats and then abort the, the, the eating of the fly. Triggers will continuously try get that fly, which is really cool. That's one of the other reasons that make them cool. It's, it's a prolonged process of you and that fish. And um, hopefully you can get that little bit of a point of the hook to find some flesh and you can you can set the hook and then, then the fun really starts. Once, once he's on the line, um, you generally got to chase him. He's going to try get into a hole. You've got to try keep him out that hole. They're a lot stronger than you think. Um, they also have a funny habit of when they hook, they can actually pedal backwards, so they, they swim backwards, which is really cool. They're not sure what's going on. 
that's another thing that makes them comical. And then obviously the, the trigger system. So they've got uh, a, a, what we'd call an anal fin and a dorsal fin. So they can actually lock that dorsal fin. So they'll swim into a coral head and uh, lock that fin. It's like concrete, you can't move it, but there is a, is a way you can bring it down. It's the trigger, hence the name trigger fish. You've got the dorsal fin here, you've got a secondary dorsal. So you try to push that dorsal, it won't go down at all. But if you touch the second secondary sort of spine dorsal behind that, then the trigger will, will flop down. So if you can get your arm into the hole and it's stuck in there, you need to try to get to that trigger, which releases the, the lock on the, on the dorsal. It'll drop down and then you can try pull him out quickly without getting your fingers anywhere near his mouth because <laughs> they'll take your finger right off. As always, I hope you found this video useful. Please like and subscribe to our YouTube channel and I look forward to seeing you on the next one. Think of trigger fishing, Steve-o. Shit! <laughs> Why is it shit, Steve-o? We can't catch the bastards. <laughs> Why is that, Steve-o? I'm shit. <laughs>